This is the fifth in a series of short podcasts designed for the families of children with chromosome 18 abnormalities. In this podcast, we will explain fish analysis. Many of you have heard of fish analysis as a confirmatory test for a karyotype result. Here we will explain what this test can tell you and what it cannot tell you. FISH is an acronym for Fluorescence in C2 Hybridization. Hybridization is just a fancy word for attach. It means that a fluorescently labeled probe is used to attach to a certain spot on the chromosome on the microscope slide. In our laboratory, we have over 400 different FISH probes that are specific for every part of chromosome 18. This way, we can look for the presence or absence of any part of the chromosome using this technique. In this particular example of fish, we used a probe for the chromosome 18 centromere, shown in green, and a probe for the end of chromosome 18q, or the telomere, shown in red. This tells us that this particular chromosome 18 does not have a deletion from the end of the long arm of chromosome 18. But because this particular technique does not show the bands, it does not tell us much else about chromosome 18, or the other chromosomes for that matter. For example, there could be a deletion of the end of the p-arm, and you would not necessarily know that from this particular test, because you're only looking for the presence or absence of the fish probe. Here's another example. This experiment also uses a probe for the end of the 18q long arm, the telomere. In the picture on the right, the white arrows point to the two copies of chromosome 18. You can see that each of these chromosomes has the green fish probe attached to it at the end of the chromosome. Therefore, these chromosomes do not have a deletion that involves the end of 18q. We cannot conclude that the picture on the right is of normal chromosomes, just that there are two 18q telomeres. These chromosomes could have a small deletion of a region that the probe does not attach to, and so you would not know about it from this test. In the picture of chromosomes on the left, the arrows point to each copy of chromosome 18. In this picture, you can see that only one of the copies of chromosome 18 has the green probe attached to it. Therefore, one of these chromosomes has an 18q deletion at the end of the chromosome. We have no way of knowing how big that deletion is, however. On the positive side, chromosomes that appear to be normal in the standard karyotype can actually have a small deletion or duplication that can be detected using the FISH technique. So smaller changes can be detected. However, you have to know just which probe to use in order to detect the deletion or duplication. So this technique is really useful when you already suspect a particular region has a copy number change. Another similar strategy is to use whole chromosome paints. These are pooled fish probes that cover an entire chromosome and are labeled with a single color. In this experiment, you can see that two chromosomes have the fluorescent probe attached to them. This means that we can determine that there is no chromosome 18 material that has been translocated to another chromosome. You can also see that each of these two copies of chromosome 18 is entirely chromosome 18. There is no material from another chromosome translocated onto them. They are entirely chromosome 18. This technique is helpful if you suspect that there is a translocation between two different chromosomes. Even though fish probes are small and allow the detection of small deletions, they are still relatively large. You have seen the above diagram before. The gray box represents the chromosome 18 bands at the tip of the p-arm. To the right of that is a base pair scale going from one at the top to over seven million base pairs at the bottom. To the right of that are the location of the genes shown by the white lines. Some of the gene name abbreviations are also shown. The red box shows the smallest detectable change using the standard cytogenetic karyotype. The little yellow bar shows the size of a fish probe relative to the base pair scale. On our football field, it would be five inches long. You can see that the probe is very small compared to the smallest detectable cytogenetic change. This means that it can be used to detect small changes. On the other hand, the probe is still bigger than many genes. It could, in fact, cover several genes. So it is still not specific enough if your goal is to know exactly which genes might be in one copy instead of two, or in three copies instead of two. To summarize what we've learned about fish, 
First, it's not a good screening tool for assessing all chromosomes and discovering what might be different from normal. You need to know, when you plan the experiment, what region of the genome you're assessing. But it is a good tool for confirming a diagnosis. It has a potential for missing a really small deletion because while the probe is small, it is still bigger than many genes. Most clinical cytogenetic laboratories perform FISH, however, they usually only use a limited number of probes with proven clinical significance.